Hello, Board Game Shenanigans here. So this video is the top 10 uh, upcoming releases for board games. Uh, so this can be generally uh, Kickstarters that will be coming out um, later this year or maybe next year. And it could also just be games that are going to come out to retail at some point uh, this year or next year as well. So the first game is one that's recently been, been announced in the last month, and that is the Call of Cthulhu Horror on the Orient Express board game. So this uh, board game is kind of based on the Call of Cthulhu, or Call of Cthulhu RPG series that's already um, exists, and it's based in that universe, and it's a new uh, board game coming out that's um, there's not too much about, and that's why I've put this kind of number 10, really, that... It's going to be a cooperative game, uh, which, you know, I do enjoy cooperative games, especially those based on uh, Cthulhu, because uh, I do enjoy, like, the Arkham Horror, Eldritch Horror, and, like, call, um, Cthulhu Death May Die as well. So I do enjoy that theme, so there's got a lot of theme behind it, and I do like co-op games. So this is one I've got my eye on, and it's made by uh, Adam Kwapinski, which is the um, designer behind Nemesis, and... I do like Nemesis as well, so that's some of the reasons why I'm looking into it. Uh, the Kickstarter won't be until 2024, and then it's coming out 2025. So this one's a long way away at the moment, but um, they've got the pages up for it just to cover kind of what you're going to do. Um, some of it, it's saying on here for mechanisms, things like uh, deck bag pool building, uh, narrative choice, push your luck. So there's some info here, but um, well, how much is this is accurate? I'm not sure. Uh, it depends if the designer made this uh, page. But uh, overall, the mechanics of the game seem like it interests me, uh, what type of thing I like to see. And it's from a Chaosium uh, Games here. Which I've not um, got much behind them either, but they did uh, the original Arkham Horror uh so they've been around for a long time uh but not much uh in board games really i think it's more rpgs that they've been doing so we'll see what um how what comes of that see if it's any good uh so next it number nine is uh worms and worms i'm a big fan of worms the video game series uh you know i've played it since i was young really um I think one of the first ones to play was Worms Armageddon on the Nintendo 64. Um, and then same on like PlayStation 1 and other games after it. And Worms itself, uh, I think it didn't it wasn't as good as a video game as it went on. I think some of the 3D ones weren't as good. I did I think Worms 3D wasn't very good and Worms fought under siege. Uh, but then they went and did Ultimate Mayhem, which kind of fixed a lot of the issues and it was a better 3D one, but then they've gone back to 2D after many years. And I've seen this game, it's gone with the more of the classic style art from the like the 2000s and uh, early 2010s, rather than the new games that they've made after, because those ones, I think they're not as good, like the new Battle Royale one and WMD and all these other games. So they've gone with like, a classic style. I think this is from like Worms 3, I think that art, it looks very familiar. So that one was like when they changed it and had the different types of worms. So maybe we'll see uh, the scientists and the, the big fatty one and the tiny scout and things like that as different worm characters, or it might just be generic worms. But I think that they should go with a variety of characters because if everyone's the same worm, it's not going to be that fun. But uh, this is going to launch uh, next month in August. Uh, about 10,000 people will follow it. So there's quite a following for Worms. I think that there's going to be a lot more video game people on this campaign, but we'll see if it's any good, really, as a game. Uh, there is this nice uh, interview with the designer from uh, Mantic Games' channel here. So this is the designer with the game. So if there's anything, uh, this is really all you've got to go off so far. There's no showing off the game, but they're saying, you know, they've got all the weapons and there's, like, cards and dice, really. So there's luck involved. So... That's the gist of the game, really. There's not too much info. I think it'll come at about right as the campaign comes out, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's just like a multiplayer game. It's not a co-op game. It's just team-based combat. You have your worms and you send the squad out and attack each other. That's the gist of the game from what I gathered from this video, anyway. 
Uh, so moving on to number eight. This is uh, Senko Kushin uh, Five Sacrifices, and uh, that's a decent game. Uh, like art-wise, it does seem very uh, interesting from the way they've gone with the style. It's very based on um, like an anime-style Japanese uh, history, and I, you know I do enjoy that side of theme. It's solo co-op, so. Uh, it does is what my area that I want to see more of it. Uh, and again, just like the last few games, you know, these ones are ones that I'm looking forward to seeing more of. But again, it's it's one we have not got much gameplay of. But I think there's a bit more for this one over uh, Worms and the Cthulhu game. I think that this one, it's telling you it's going to be a campaign type of game, uh, not too much uh, story wise and this going to be like boss battles, so it's got a bit of a boss battler, campaign style game. And the art looks amazing on this game. I think the way they've done the background of this, and then they've got uh, really cool minis, or like, uh, like a two-headed wolf type thing here, with, like tiger, I mean. Uh, then we've got this uh, guy with multiple arms, and we've got uh, this woman as well. So there's a variety of stuff in the world that they've come up with. And but generally, this game, the reason why it's you know quite high on this list is because it's kind of postponed. They've not really um, set what they're gonna do with this game. They've kind of said, well, it's delayed. It's not coming anytime soon. And they're just gonna release uh, like mini files and just resin minis and things like that for the time being while they work on the game in the background. So this is probably another one that's quite a while away, maybe 2025. Uh, maybe they'll do a campaign next year or something for crowdfunding, possibly. Uh, but again, this one's in my list. It's been on my list for a while. It's something in the background where I've been looking at it as people talk about it. But again, there's not too much on it. So that's why it's number eight. Uh, next for number seven... I've gone with uh, Nemesis Retaliation, so it's a, a new version of Nemesis. It's the third Nemesis game, so they had Nemesis the original and Nemesis uh, Lockdown, and now this is Retaliation, which for what it's kind of shown so far, it does feel like it's going to go more alien style rather than um, the original alien style um, it kind of was imitating. So maybe there'll be more to this type of game. Is it going to be exactly the same as the last ones? Or is it going to be something a bit newer? Uh, again, there's not too much on this. I think this is going to be, a, yeah, it's going to be late in this year, this campaign. And then it'll probably come out late 2024, maybe 2025. So it's a while away. Um, new Aliens. And I do enjoy Nemesis. I think generally I've played Nemesis as more of a cooperative style game. So I hope that they do a bit more with the co-op on this one. But... Um, I like the co-op as it is, where you do the um, you set quests, and you have the more characters you play as, the more um, objectives you have to meet. Uh, it's quite fun to play that way. Um, I've never really gone into the traditional way of playing it with the you know with the traitor among you type of thing, but uh, overall, that's just put Nemesis there because I I do enjoy the existing Nemesis, and it's probably going to be a lot like those. So I kind of can predict in my head a lot more of what this game's going to be. Uh, so number six is a little uh, different type of game, really. It's uh, Defenders of the Wild from Outlandish Games. Uh, so this game is going to, this campaign is going to have a, like a co-op board game and a, an RPG together, I think, but like a small one. So that's the gist of that. There's not as much on this game, but uh, it's generally... Uh, the focus is your animals and there's like machines and things coming to attack the woodland land and things like that so uh there's a bit more of this on board game geek as well so uh you play in a faction and you do a lot to try and the the map's kind of built as it different every time type of thing i think so then it's not too much info on this but uh they do have some images so that's a plus to see what the game's about and for me it, that kind of stands out uh it's going to be looks looks like settlers of Catan to me uh so it's like a cooperative 
Catan style game, you're going to build maybe routes and things, you're going to build structures, you've got your people on the map, and then the tiles are going to be random as you lay them out, that's why it's a modular board, and then you place your things out. So it could be a good game, uh, we'll see, I think the Kickstarter is going to be in September for this one, so there's definitely a bit more to it with, with your cards you're playing, so you move in mechs, uh, revealing cards, move twice, so you're going to move around this board, do actions as you go and use your uh, structures you've got and it's i'm throwing how it's co-op i think it must be these are the machines all these uh, gray pieces and then your animals and colored pieces kind of liberate the area so if you build here they're gonna not go there type of thing that's kind of how i'm getting from what they've shown off there's not you know a loads of info on this just yet but um it does seem uh, decent, and I do like the style of having different animals and things like that. I think that style of game is pretty good, and yeah, it's just something I'm looking into to see if it's going to be any good when it shows up in um, September. Uh, so number five, I'm going to go with the new Ticket to Ride Legacy, and I'm a big uh, into Ticket to Ride. Uh, generally... Um, the way I've played it more recently, I've only really played it through the PS4 version of the video game, and I think that's the best way to play it. Uh, I have played the original physical game as well, and even the smaller versions of the games, like um, New York. But uh, overall, I've been more into the video game side of it, simply because of the PS4 version, you just pull up an app on your phone, and that has your hand on it, and you just do it link to your console that's on the tv so it's very quick and easy to play so it goes from a maybe like an hour long game where you're setting it up and playing it and taking your time to something that you can do in like seconds where you just tap the screen twice to draw twice and the game goes so super fast it's like done in 20 minutes so that's generally why but this is somewhat a bit longer a bit more in depth with a legacy component to it and you're gonna have to you know build the board as you go and do I think it's 12 rounds, and then when you've done your 12 goes of the game, you've got your own board, your own unique ticket to ride to play afterwards. So, yeah, and you've got, like, jigsaw pieces to add on the board as you play. So that's, like, how it starts, and then it gets a bigger and bigger, and it'll be a bigger board by the end of it. So that's uh, looking good to me. Um, the There are, um, you know, all these good uh, designers putting together who've made all these other games. Uh, you know, I enjoy most of the games I've played from these d designers, so it might be all work out and go together at the end. Uh, wait, remains to be seen, really. Uh, I'm not the biggest person on to uh, legacy style games. I think legacy games, you know, they are, are a bit of a cash grab where they, you know, they're making a game where you know you'll destroy components, you'll change the ball, put stickers on it, and then if you want to play it properly again you have to buy another copy i mean i think a lot of games these days it's easy to make it so it's refreshable back to the beginning for free you know so there's so many different campaign games out there these days you know you can easily track all this info so um i don't think this type of uh, model a uh, business model is really the amazing so it's not higher on the list but i am a big ticket to ride fan and it is allowing you to play it at the end with a unique game type of thing so it's not like you know stopping you from playing in the future so at least it's got a bit of replayability after you've done the initial campaign so that's it for that one uh so then i'm going to go to number four which is project mist uh the new Authorian game from Charaborn Games who made Osworn and I've put this one higher on the list simply because of the the I guess the value Shadowborn Games had where I think they're actually a, a quite a well good team who've made uh, made Osworn and I think Osworn's one of my favorite games so with that I'm looking more forward to seeing what they do next and what they've gone with they're going for a an asymmetric um game of like um you know uh, uh conquering lands and things like that where you're doing area control and you've got your own uh probably your own army of things so it's going to be a quite a different style of game there's not too much on it besides what's written here and what's on their website 
So they're saying like no other. So we'll remain to be seen if that's something that's going to follow up on that, where they've got actually got um, something unique in this game. But overall, I think that um, the game will be decent, and we'll see how it goes. Really, um, so I've put it higher on because I'm more like I'm more intrigued by the style because I do like the um, King Arthur style and also that. Sarah more games are behind it so i'm more interested in this in other games because even though especially other games where there's nothing seen so like uh whereas the last few games in the list uh like ticket to ride we've got you know we know it's going to be like it's ticket to ride really but this one it's going to be somewhat completely new so that's why i've put it higher on the list uh so number three i'm going with uh peacemakers horror of war which launches in about a month's time uh, so this is going to be a cooperative game with animals as well. So just like the Defenders of the Wild, I've gone with another one that's got this style because it's just somewhat interesting, really. And this one's uh, kind of a follow-up to the uh, Dawn of Peacemakers, which is an older game that was crowdfunded in the past, but you know not as easy to get a hold of these days. And now this is kind of like a, a redone version of the game where they're using like a, a flip book for each like scenario. And it's a more, another cooperative game where, you know, you're going to use your actions, go on the board and um, really just use the abilities you've got for each class of animals. So there's quite a lot there and it's actually, you know, it, it's more cutesy, but it's not entirely because it's, you know, it's a bit more um, aggressive. Because it's like a war, it's like a war style game, but it's cooperative. So some people like say like similar to like Root and things like that, where that's like a a versus game where you're doing your armies. Well, this one's more co-op, so more up for some that I'm into. Uh, so this one, just um, gonna look into more and see what I think. But when it comes out on the campaign, see how much it costs and how much really what they're offering really. So um, and it could be done solo as well. So this one, that's why number three. I think that it looks pretty cool. Um, and you know, it's a follow up to Dawn of the Peacemakers, so yeah, so this one might be um it's gonna have minis in the new version, I'm sure, if they wanna follow up and do that, because the, the Kickstarter this crowdfunding from GameFound doesn't say that yet, but we'll have to see if it does do the same deluxe style on it. Um but it's got like the same art, so it's really just a full on remake of the game. So hopefully improves on the things wrong with the old game and also include like minis and things like that to make it special on the, the game found campaign. Uh, so for number two, I'm going to go with uh, Rogue Angels. So this is going to launch in like September and it's a cooperative sci fi like dungeon crawl style game. Uh, it does look quite uh, interesting. It's also got the subtitle Legacy of the Burning Suns, but I don't think it's a full-on legacy style game, but it's got like a, a campaign with loads of missions that you can do, and depending on what choices you do, you'll get a different quest. Um, there's not uh, a lot about the new campaign here, but they do have an old um, page here on Board Game Geek. It's got a few updates on it. Uh, it shows some of the, you know, you've got action points and it's cooperative. Uh, the game kind of looks, um, it looks okay. I'm not sure if they'll do minis as well or they're just doing full standees as the game, but they've got this like 3D ship on here as well and all the monsters and characters, aliens and things like that in the cardboard standees. Uh, here's some of the minis, so there will be minis for the game as well. So it's quite a lot into it. Uh, this campaign originally had one. Uh, in 2022 but this one kind of didn't get as what they wanted um nowhere near really so they've still got this um to come but they had a game ready and you know they've been working on this another year and a half since this campaign didn't succeed so they've still not given up on the game so maybe this time around they'll do a lot better uh definitely it's about story choices so they've got this flowchart of different choices you can do uh some 3d more wall again on that ship so they've got a lot of this planned out and people are starting to review and talk about the new version now on like youtube but at the time people did but it didn't do that well so hopefully they um do a lot better and um 
can actually get this game out uh, this time around, and a lot of people covered it, it seems. So um, hopefully they go in with the, the new marketing as well, showing off the new, with new channels. Um, but yeah, uh, that's one's number two for me. I think that it is a good looking game. Hopefully um, it does well, and I hope to see what the pledges are like uh, in the new version. This one. They were. It was a cheaper price back then, um, so maybe. And also, they had December, so will it be a shorter time now because more of it's ready? Um, so it could be if it's a quick turnover, it might do quite well. Uh, and then lastly, number one, I'm going to go with Dante The Invasion of Hell, which is from Creative Game Studios, who made Chronicles of Drunagor. Uh, I think I was really impressed with Chronicles of Drunagor, that's why. Um, you know, I've got the Creative Game Studios are higher up on my list of um, different uh, d designers where I think they've done quite well with that game and they've followed up on it with the new um, Apocalypse campaign. So I I've enjoyed their game already and this is another uh, co-op or solo style game and they've got really good uh, miniatures already advertised for the game. It's going to have Foreteller, so it's going to be a very story-based style game with boss battles so it might be a lot more boss battle than uh, Chronicles of Drunagor was so it's not really a dungeon crawl anymore so it's a different type of game that they've gone with and they're going to do uh, I'm feeling is it going to be a lot like Oathsworn type of thing because we've got narrative boss battle um, that's why I'm kind of thinking how this game's going to be um, but for overall this one is going up as my number one anticipated game, it'll launch later this year when uh, Chronicles, Chronicles of Drunagor is finished and yeah they've covered quite a bit of the game so far, not not much on what the game's going to look like, I think that they've just kind of described the narrative and things like that so hopefully they still show more but I think that's because they're holding back for when they've got uh, Chronicles of Drunagor finished really. So. Uh, I think they're also asking, should we change the name? Uh, any of the names are fine, really. I don't think that it mattered that much. It's not a major change of the name, so hopefully they um, uh, come out with this later in the year and have more to say about it and show about it soon. Uh, so, yeah, that's generally my top ten. Um, uh, if you've got any other games that you want to see, uh, like... Uh, on the channel or any games that you think here is um you, you know you might be not not agree with me i think it's going to be a bad game or a good game feel free to leave your comments below uh if there's what, any game other games i didn't cover anything you're excited for feel free to make some recommendations in the comments as well and also um i guess just uh keep enjoying board games uh don't get to uh, focused on it I think as well so, you know I'm talking about these games but you know I think I covered in my last video about FOMO don't worry too much about them you know they're games and even then I know I've pointed out these 10 games it could be possible for me to not even get any of them it could be possible that I get all of them it doesn't really matter to me I, I kind of just, um, just go with the flow see what I'm feeling you know if this game doesn't show off as the type of gameplay I enjoy I probably won't get it and if uh you know, the, some of the games I haven't even considered on this list. There could be, you know, some that moves up to number one. So, you know, got to just, you know, take it easy. Uh, enjoy yourself. Thanks very much for watching the video. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. Bye.